<laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> the Supreme Court has dropped the Trump immunity decision. They say it's not about Trump immunity. It's about immunity for presidents in the big picture. I think that's reasonable, but the decision has dropped. And for all intents and purposes, it's a win for Trump. Trump has immunity. In some areas, he has absolute immunity. In other areas, he doesn't. And that is exactly what we expected. Law to expected that. Normal, everyday people expected that. Everyone except leftists expected that. So Trump has immunity for official acts. I think that stands to reason. He doesn't have immunity when he is doing non-presidential things. I think that also stands to reason. That's basically the decision in a nutshell. I believe this decision was uh, it's a 6 out of 10, maybe a 7 out of 10 win for Donald Trump. Ultimately, this decision was cowardly. The, the, the Supreme Court was a little bit of a chicken. Because what they did was they said, yes, Donald Trump does have immunity for all of the, all of the, the things he did as president. In his official capacity, he has immunity. But what those things are, we're not going to tell you. We will refer that to the lower court to figure out. This would have been a much better, a much stronger decision if the Supreme Court actually set the parameters of what is official and unofficial conduct. So a bit cowardly. But then again, we all know the Supreme Court has a... Um, they have a history. There's a track record of them being a, a bunch of yellow-bellied cowards. Most of the time when they run to standing, oh, you don't have standing. Oh, shucks. We really wanted to rule on this, but there's no standing. I guess you'll have to come back later. Yeah, that's cowardice. They did that with the social media ruling that also dropped. They did that 2020 regarding the... Um, election. It was all standing. Latches. Latches. You you filed too soon. You filed too late. You shouldn't have filed at all. We don't want to hear this case because we're cowards. That's the Supreme Court. Ultimately, very, very cowardly. So this is a torpedo directly into the side of the enemy ship that is the prosecutions of, of Donald Trump. Not the state ones in New York, but Jack Smith. That witch hunt against Donald Trump, that's taking a shot right right into the bow. This, this is just a, a torpedo. Th those, those cases against Donald Trump, those indictments, they're likely not going to survive this. They will need to be entirely rewritten. A lot of it's going to have to be stripped out. It might not even be worth prosecuting. Like There might be nothing there. I mean, there's already technically nothing there. But once they strip out, Everything that needs to be stripped out of it because of this ruling, there's there's nothing there. So that's it in a nutshell. We'll go a little bit deeper into this, but first, I do want to say it is ju it is July first, so Happy Canada Day to everyone, even those who are not Canadian. Happy Canada Day. Second, Happy Mega Month. We just had our Pride Month. That now it's a Mega Month. So that's fantastic. Third, next week, next Sunday is July the 7th. That is my birthday. I am turning 40 years old. Maybe, maybe you can believe it. Maybe you can't. I know, I know the uh, Juneteenth print that I'm wearing now. It brings out the youthfulness of my eyes. But I do turn 40. I will be celebrating on stream, on Rumble with, with a bunch of my friends. I would love for you to join. So do follow me on Rumble. My time on YouTube is probably limited. Um, they they hate me and censor me and demonetize me every chance they get. Literally at every chance. So I would love to have you guys hang out. Maybe come on stream with me. Be, be in the chat. Whatever. For my birthday. My actual birthday. Do, 
you'll see my youthfulness literally as the clock is midnight. You'll see my youth leave my body. So please do that. It'll be a great time. Here we go. Trump has immunity from prosecution for official act. Supreme Court rules in monumental decision for presidential powers. The president of the United States has immunity from prosecution for official acts in office. The Supreme Court ruled in a monumental decision with massive implications for presidential powers and the criminal cases against Donald Trump. The case centered around special counsel Jack Smith's prosecution of Trump for allegedly masterminding efforts to overthrow the 20. 20- the election while in office, including on January 6th. I mean, none of that, none of that happened. And Donald Trump did a really good job articulating that during that debate. The one thing this might not impact, and it was left very vague and very nebulous in the decision, is whether or not this will impact the Florida records case. The Donald Trump shouldn't have had those papers. It doesn't matter that all other presidents had them. And even Joe Biden when he wasn't a president. We just don't like the orange man. You know, that case. It might not impact that. Although there's some wiggle room. To, to maybe, maybe it will. Maybe it won't. The ex-president's team argued that Trump and any president must have absolute immunity from prosecution over actions taken in office for it could impair important decision-making. The 6-3 decision split along the court's ideological lines ensures that Trump will not face another blockbuster trial before the November election as the case is sent back to the lower court to determine what is considered official versus unofficial act. That's where that cowardice comes in. The Supreme Court should have done that instead of being like, well, you know, the all of the courts that can't figure out anything, we'll just let them decide. And I would argue that um, the court doesn't have clear ideological lines because Kenji Brown Jackson, she's doing a lot of conservative stuff. The president enjoys no immunity for his unofficial acts, so he couldn't rape a baby. You know what I mean? That's one of the things the left says. Oh, well, I guess that means Joe Biden can go out and do something horrific because he's immune. No, you can't. You can't shoot somebody on the White House lawn or whatever that example is. You can't. You can't do that. The president enjoys no immunity for his unofficial acts. And not everything the president does is official. The president is not above the law. The justice is led by Chief Justice John Roberts, says in in the majority. Yes, I mean, that's, of course, of course, not everything a president does is official president business. So the fact that this even needed to be brought to the Supreme Court is insane. I mean, how many presidents, so I guess there's been 46 presidents, 200 and what, 50 whatever years or something, and only now. The Supreme Court has to like say this. It's like it's it's really it's really wild how we just sort of always sort of knew that. But under our system of separated powers, the president may not be prosecuted for exercising his core constitutional powers, and he is entitled to at least presumptive immunity from prosecution for his official acts. That immunity applies equally to all occupants of the Oval Office. Except Steve Bannon's in going to jail today. Trump celebrated the decision, writing on Truth Social. Big win for our Constitution and democracy. Proud to be an American. Roberts wrote in the opinion that Trump is also at least presumptively immune from the allegations related to the pressure campaign on former Vice President Mike Pence regarding the certification of the 2020 vote. In addition, Trump is absolutely immune from alleged misconduct during discussions with the Justice Department. So he is free. Any president is free to talk to their Justice Department. Now, 
everyone might say this is a big win for Donald Trump. It's a big win for Donald Trump. And maybe that very well may be the case. But let's not forget for a moment that it's also a massive win for Obama. He blew up kids. <laughs> blow up some kids. But also, it's a massive win for Biden. Because if there's ever really in, in, in our lives been a crook, I mean, they're all crooks. In some capacity, they're all crooks. Some are more crooked than, than others. But politicians are crooks. Joe Biden is the biggest crook. He's got a Biden crime family. Like, we all know that. He benefits the most out of this immunity. Immunity is a two-way street. Biden's going to benefit very, very much out of it. So if there's absolute immunity for a president talking to his Justice Department, then Biden saying, hey, Justice Department, go after Trump with everything you have. Lock up my political opponent. He, he is immune from that. That's, that's kind of gross. But I guess that's what, just where we are. It is what it is. The Supreme Court's historic ruling could also impact the two other ongoing criminal prosecutions against Trump for his alleged mishandling of classified documents and for the election subversion efforts in Georgia. I mean, he didn't mishandle classified documents. That's just that's just a lie. And he didn't try to subvert the election in Georgia. I just wanted to point that out. They whatever. The majority opinion by Roberts continues. At a minimum, the president must be immune from prosecution for an unofficial act unless the government can show that applying a, a criminal prohibition to that act would pose no dangers of intrusion on the authority and functions of the executive branch. The Supreme Court currently has a conservative 6-3 majority with three of the conservative justices nominated by Trump during his, his uh, time in office. What we're finding is that Amy Coney Barrett is not exactly brilliant. So you seem to have the leftist judges. You seem to have the conservative judges. But you also then, it's like a 3-3 split. 3-3-3 three, three, three split. You have your three leftist judges. You have your three conservative justices. But then you also have three justices that are establishment. They will swing either way depending on what the establishment craves and wants and needs. So Amy Coney Barrett was, was like, yeah, it's totally fine that the government can spy and tell social media what to do. And you're like, hey, wait a minute, maybe, maybe you shouldn't be saying that. And she's like, but I'm establishment. That's what I do. So the, the lines drawn in the suit. In the Supreme Court, it's not as it's not as clear as what people say. They go, "Oh, there's so many conservatives. Oh, it's a conservative." Ju it's not. It's not. It's not that. It's th the line, the ideological line. It doesn't go down conservative and leftist. There's leftist, there's conservative, and then you have your your three establishment shills in the middle. The Biden campaign reacted to the Supreme Court decision on immunity with a statement from a senior campaign advisor because Joe Biden couldn't obviously make it because his brain is mashed bananas. Today, today's ruling doesn't change the facts. It literally does. So let's be very clear about what happened on January 6th. The Donald Trump snapped after he lost the 2020 election and, and encouraged a mob to overthrow the results of a free and fair election. And Donald Trump did that. He snapped and encouraged people to peacefully and patriotically assemble and let their voices be heard. That's snapping, don't you know? Like, what's, what's with these lies? They're, they are just peddling, pushing out the same lies over and over and over. Like, they... The audacity, the audacity of Joe Biden to be like, during, in the debate, he said there were five people on both sides. I'm like, really? This is like seven years after that. And even Snopes was all like, actually, that's debunked. It took us seven years to figure it out, but we did it. <laughs> uh, lawyers representing special counsel had argued 
that a president can face charges for committing crimes while in office and no public official has absolute immunity. So District Judge Tanya Chutkin, who is overseeing the Jan 6th insurrection case or whatever, as well as the D.C. Court of Appeals, had both ruled that Trump is not immune from prosecution. And that's, of course, because they are leftist shills. Shills? I don't know. Apparently, YouTube has decided that all swearing, all of it, is no bueno. Can't say any swear word at all. While the lower courts awaited the Supreme Court decision, Chutkin previously assured that Trump would have at least two months pre-trial prep before any trial moves forward. So that suggests the earliest that this case could take place is in September, right as the 2024 campaign season kicks into high gear. Trump also faces the, the case in Florida and in Georgia. So he's got three left, and the Georgia one is like scuttled. It is it's scuttled for multiple reasons. This DC one is is again it took a missile right into the side. So that's that's that. And the uh the Florida documents one, that judge is really uninterested in the case. I think she is probably you know, she's probably gonna toss it. So Trump has immunity from prosecution for official acts. It's it's a big deal. It is a big deal that doesn't just help democracy right now. It it this this ruling was designed to help it in the future. Thank you for watching this video. I love you all, and uh, don't forget um, to join me on Rumble, especially for Saturday Night Off the Rails. It is my Saturday show where we have a bunch of fun. We talk about news. We don't stay on topic very well, but as always, a good time where people can let go and and let their hair down. And, and all that stuff next next Saturday, uh, July 7th, my birthday. I love you all. See you in the next video. Peace. Peace.